The Arsis system has been around for many years now, but how did it all start? Let's take a trip down memory lane and see how it all began back in the early days of air traffic management. In the early days of air traffic control, ATM systems were simple. You needed a rotating device to detect an aircraft. Also, you needed an air traffic controller assistant. The assistant collected flight data and presented them humbly to the air traffic controller. From the input given by the assistant, the air traffic controller was then able to control the aircraft. As you can see, even at that time, controllers were able to communicate with an aircraft from a distance by modern means of communication. But these early ATM systems were far from perfect. A single point of failure, as this one, where the sensor becomes unserviceable, would imply that the controller could no longer control the aircraft. Incidents like these often caused flight delays, loss of luggage, angry pilots, and stressed air traffic controllers. The solution, of course, was to add more sensors. And to coordinate the increasing number of sensors, ARTAS was invented. This was the birth of ARTAS version 1A1. Now, let's take a closer look at the functions of the first ARTAS system. ARTAS was composed of three people, each with their unique function. Let's start with Mr. Ruderbridge. His job was to collect data from the different sensors. Data was then passed on from Mr. Ruderbridge to Mr. Tracker. Mr. Tracker was gifted with unparalleled math skills and was therefore able, on the fly so to say, to calculate the most probable position of each aircraft based on the sensor input. Finally, the data from the sensor was passed from Mr. Tracker to Mr. Server. Mr. Server would then present the data to the air traffic controller, who used the updated air picture to control the aircraft. Originally, the intention was for ARSA's version 1A1 to have a system monitoring function. This function was designed to display the status of the system using different colors. But due to the fact that it wasn't actually possible to display colors at the time, this function just didn't make any sense. So these were the main functions of the ARTAS system. But ARTAS could do much more than that. Mr. Ruderbridge was also able to determine whether a sensor was available or not. He was also able to determine whether the data input was valid and usable. If Mr. Ruderbridge assessed that the input data from the sensor were useless, these data were discarded. Sensor data was available and valid, Mr. Tracker could use them to update existing tracks. 
Mr. Tracker was able to evaluate the sensors in order to determine which sensors that should contribute the most to the position of the track. He could also initiate new tracks. And finally, terminate coasted tracks. The following version of Artis, the version 1B1, was delivered with dual core. This means that a second router bridge, tracker and server was added to the system. With dual core, the air traffic control display was updated twice as fast as with a single call. A lot has happened since the first Artis version was unveiled. The Earth turned out to be round, the dinosaurs have come extinct, and cozy social events like witch hunts and gladiator fights were banned. And through all these years, Artis has continued to develop into the fabulous ATM system that we know today. And who knows, maybe in the future, Artis might also be used for car traffic control.